Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about 10.5, which is um, applications of matrices and determinants. And the biggest application we have here is going to be Kramer's rule. Now, Kramer's rule is used to solve those systems of equations. And we do have two methods so far. We have the gauss jardin illumination, We also have the inverse, um, it's the coefficient matrix inverse times the constant matrix, right? Those are the two methods that we've been using so far to solve systems of equations. But now that we've learned how to find determinants, we should be able to find the solutions to those systems um, pretty easily without um, so many steps. I and mean, there's still a few steps for these, especially when you're talking about a three by three but they're still nowhere near as intense as the steps that we were doing in this method. And definitely not as intense as this one because in order to find this inverse, we essentially are using gauss jardin elimination. So this Kramer's rule is gonna avoid gauss jardin completely. So I don't have to do all my row operations at all, ever, okay? And that's what's nice about this Kramer's rule. And Kramer's rule really was, um, the entire purpose for the whole section, okay? So we had to talk about determinants, what they are, how they work, how to find an inverse, how to find, how to use them to solve systems. Um, but now we finally get to the holy grail of it all, which is the easiest way to find um, systems, uh, sol solutions to systems of linear equations. So the first thing we need to do is come up with these labels, okay? So, uh, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. So you do have a coefficient matrix in your system, right? And then you also have a constant matrix in your system. So normally you would have something like this, A1, B, I'm sorry, they're calling it different labels. So you would have this, and then you would have your x1 and your x2 or x and y. And then you would have your constant, right? Whatever those are, okay? This is the way it works, is your um, capital D, which is a determinant, okay? This determinant is gonna be the determinant of the coefficient matrix. Okay, that's what you're taking the determinant of, just the coefficient matrix. You're gonna go boom, uh, downwards and upwards, and then you have capital D once you evaluate that determinant, okay? This one, notice that the coefficient matrix, the second column doesn't change, but the first column, which originally in the system of equations is all the coefficients of your X. So notice what happens is that dx means you're gonna replace the x column with the constants, okay? If you wanna do dy, then you're gonna replace the y column with the constants. So each time you're gonna go back to the original coefficient matrix. And if you're find a, trying to find dx, you're gonna replace that x column with the coefficients. If you're trying to find dy, you're gonna replace the y column with the coefficients. If I were doing a three by three and you had a third variable like Z, then you would re be replacing that Z column with the uh, coefficients, okay? So, um, sorry, the thing was glitching really bad there. Um, so for example, this is our system of equations, okay? And if you look at the coefficients, I usually like to write it like this, so two, negative four, negative five, three, and then three, eight. We know that this part is the coefficient matrix. And then we know that this part is just the constant matrix. Okay. So what we're gonna do for D is just take the determinant of the, const of the coefficient matrix. So notice that all four of these entries are the exact same as the four entries on this side, um, the coefficient matrix part, okay? 
Then when they tried to do dx, notice that the x's, the x coefficients, these guys, are replaced with the constants. So it's 3, 8, and then the y coefficients, negative 5, 3. For dy, the x coefficients are the same. They're good. But the y's are get what's getting replaced with the constants. OK? Now, if I want to apply Kramer's rule, Kramer's rule tells us that if you want to solve for x, then you just take the ratio of dx over d. You would take to find y, you would do the uh, ratio of dy over d. And if you wanted to find z, you would do the ratio of dz over d. Okay. However, we have one condition for Kramer's rule. Since you can never ever have a zero in the denominator of a ratio or a fraction, um, if that capital D, that determinant of the coefficient matrix, if that determinant is zero, then you cannot use Kramer's rule. You would have to use Gauss-Jardin or you would have to use the inverse. Um, unless the directions tell me to use the inverse, I'm never going to use the inverse one. Um, or unless it gave me the inverse, I'm not going to do it. Because all the Gauss-Jardin elimination that you'd have to do for to find the inverse, you're already going to do it when you do Gauss-Jardin to solve the system. So it doesn't make sense to me to do eliminate uh, Gauss-Jardin Gauss elimination and then go find a product when I can just do Gauss-Jardin elimination and get the answer, okay? So normally, if, if my determinant of D is zero, I will just do gauss jordan elimination, OK? But let's go ahead and um, solve this system. So here we go is a new, a new one. They're just, that one was just a reference or an explanation for dx, dy, and dz. Now we're actually going to apply it. So for D, you're just taking the coefficients. So 4, 3, negative 2, negative 5. You find the downward product minus the upward product, and you get this value. So this value is D. Then if I want to find DX, and they didn't do that here, but if I wanted to find DX, okay, that means I would write for the X column the constants. The Y column will still have the Y coefficients. If I want to set up DY, then the y column is going to have those constants, and the x column will stay with its original coefficients. And so let's find this determinant. This product is going to be negative 50 minus this product, which is a negative 22. So I actually end up with a negative um, 28. Then here, this product is a 44, take away this product, which is a 30, I get 14. So in order for me to solve for x and y, x is dx over d, which in this case, the values are negative 28 over negative 14, which actually reduces to 2. And y is dy over d, which in this case is positive 14 over negative 14, which reduces to negative one. So the solution here is two comma negative one. And if you wanted to check it, you just verify. At four times x2 is eight, minus two times a negative one, which means I would add two, I do get 10. Three times two is six, negative five times a negative one is plus five, and that does come out to equal 11. So this is, in fact, the true solution to that system. But this was a whole lot easier to compute, in my opinion, than the elimination method, the graphing method, the substitution method, the Gauss, definitely the Gauss-Jardin elimination method, um, the inverse method, all the methods that we've learned so far, this is the easiest one to compute. OK, as long as you know all those rules and all those things about matrices, this is the easiest way to find those solutions. OK, and that's why I say this is like the holy grail of what we were trying to get to ultimately in this entire chapter. Um, so that is 
the answer there. So we have a problem here. This is more like something you would see in your engineering, okay? But it's not too, too big. I notice there's only three variables, right? I1, I2, and I3. So it's not so bad. Um, we're gonna go ahead and um, figure it out, but using Kramer's rule, okay? So it says, consider the circuit, and then it says amperes, given the solution of the system of linear equations, use Kramer's rule to find all three currents. So I'm gonna first put it in my um, augmented matrix. So I have four for I1, no I2s, eight for I3, and then two for my constant. I don't have any I1s, so zero, then two for I2, positive eight for I3 and six for my constant. Here I have a positive one coefficient for I1, a positive one coefficient for I2, a negative one coefficient for I3, and then a zero for that last constant. So when I set up D, it's gonna be the determinant of the coefficient matrix, which is four, zero, eight, zero, two, eight, one, one, negative one. Now, we know the shortcut on how to find this determinant. So I'm just going to apply um, that shortcut. So I'm gonna repeat the first two rows. I'm sorry, I keep saying rows. I'm gonna repeat the first two columns, and then I'm gonna start doing my products. Now, I kind of cheat. I <laughs> just write the product right here, negative eight, and then I multiply these and that product is zero. Then I multiply these and that product is zero, okay? Then I go in the other direction, that's only two, so that's not enough right here. So I'm gonna go over here and find that product, I get 16. Then I find this product, I get 32. And then I find this product and I get zero. Now remember, all the ones that went downward are gonna be positive, right? So first one plus the second one plus the third one. The ones that came from the upper products, those are gonna get subtracted. So it's gonna be minus 16, minus 32, minus zero. So ultimately I end up with negative eight minus 16 minus 32 is negative 56. And as long as that's not zero, I can continue to use Kramer's rule. So I have figured out that D is equal to negative 56. Let's go ahead and move on to try to find DX. So DX is a, uh, a determinant again, but the X column will get replaced with the constant. The Y and Z columns are gonna stay as they were. Okay, then again, I'm gonna recopy those first two columns and find these determinants. So here it's negative four, here it's zero, and here it's 48. Now doing the upper products. This is zero, this is 16, and this is zero. So I end up with negative four plus zero plus 48, and then you subtract the uppers. So minus zero, minus 16, minus zero. And what do I end up with? I end up with a positive 28, okay? So that is dx. I can already figure out what X is. It's gonna be DX over D, which is 28 over negative 56. And so 28 over negative 56 turns out to equal negative one half. And so I already have one value. And I shouldn't have used X because my first um, variable is not X. My first variable is actually I1. So really everywhere I have an X, I shouldn't be using X. I should be using I1 because that's not what um, variables they gave me. 
tilt my thing. I put I2 over here. It's because I'm ready for the next one. That's why. <laughs> I know I have to do I2 next. Okay. So we did finish everything for that first variable. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the second variable. So for the second variable, that's I2. This time, the second column is going to get replaced with the constants. The I2 column is going to get replaced with the constants. So the middle one will become two, six, zero. And then the first uh, I1's coefficients should stay the same and I3's coefficients should stay the same. And then I repeat the process for the determinant. So four, zero, one, two, six, zero. I'm going to find this product, negative 24, this product, 16, this product, um, zero. Then the uppers, this product is 48, this product is zero, and this product is zero. So what do I end up with? Negative 24 plus 16 plus zero, and then take away the uppers. So minus 48, minus zero, minus zero. So I'm typing this in my calculator. And I get negative 56. So that means that I2 is DI2 over D which is negative 56 over negative 56, which just reduces to a positive one. So I2 is actually equal to one. Now, finally, we can do the last variable, I3. And after solving all of these problems using um, Gauss Jardin, this is so much nicer. So the third column here is gonna get replaced by my constants. And then the I1 coefficients are going to stay the same. The I2 coefficients are going to stay the same. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat the first two columns to get that determinant. So the downward product is zero. Downward product is zero. Downward product is zero. Then um, the upward product is four here. The upward product is 24 here, and then the upward product is zero here. So we end up with zero plus zero plus zero minus four minus 24 minus zero. I end up with negative 28. So I3 is going to be DI3 over D. So that's negative 28 over negative 56 that reduces down to positive one half. So that means that I3 is positive one half. So when you go to enter your answers in the computer, make sure that you're putting the correct number with the correct subscript, okay? But that is the end of this section. I mean, this is a whole bunch easier now that you learned everything, right? Um, it makes everything a little bit easier. But that is the end of this section. That is the end of this chapter. And this is the very last lesson for the entire semester. So yay, you made it. <laughs> um, now it's just time to study for that very last test and then the final exam.